consumer video data set with mark head uh, trajectories and the author is uh, Joe Sarpanko oh, no? not, not even close okay. uh, <laughs> so the floor is yours okay so can everyone hear me I hope so indeed uh, my name is uh, Jonis Arvanko and uh, I come from the University of Oulu from Finland and uh, I will uh, give a presentation uh, of our paper consumer video dataset with uh, marked head trajectories and to clarify at the very beginning uh, with consumer video we mean uh, also this uh, user generated mobile video since there are quite a few names for this and uh, I would like to start with some uh, YouTube statistics. So uh, uh, in uh, 2010, uh, YouTube uh, reached a milestone, milestone where uh, 24 hours of video was uh, updated uh, uh, per minute. And uh, in just two years, this amount has tri tripled. So there's a huge amount of video that is uh, created all the time. And uh, in 2009, uh, it was reported that 23% uh, 23 of this uh, uh, of viewed content in YouTube was uh, user generated. So it's uh, quite an important part of this uh, this uh, video sharing giant. So uh, with these huge volumes of data, uh, we need solutions for uh, better accessing the relevant videos uh, from the carpets and uh, uh, these uh, solutions naturally need some uh, tests data sets and benchmarks to evaluate uh, how well they perform in comparison to others and for consumer videos uh, there are some uh, data sets already but they mostly focus on uh, keyframe labeling uh, which is a fast method and uh, good for creating summarizations uh, but uh, they uh, lose in temporal information, uh, which is important. Uh, for example, if you uh, want to uh, describe uh, object behavior or football events, follow some uh, person, etc. So why are we interested of these consumer videos? Basically, because they are so difficult, they are unconstrained. Uh, they can have uh, these difficult lighting conditions, obscured uh, views, and uh, mm, objects that block the view. They are, they are, there's no control in the environment, typic, uh, in the worst case. And then uh, they are done with uh, handheld uh, recording devices uh, in the consumer price range. So this means that there can be video shake and uh, fast camera motions and the poor video quality and also the uh, typical uh, consumers they uh, uh, don't do so much editing so it can mean that there are long camera runs and uh, well this brings us again to the camera motion which is not so nice for uh, for example some visual surveillance uh, solutions but so we decided that uh, we could offer a new data set. So we uh, created a novel and challenging consumer video data set and uh, marked uh, head trajectories on the videos. And uh, also we needed to create an annotation tool uh, for marking this ground truth. So our annotation tool is for storing metadata for creating and storing metadata for these uh, videos in MPEG-7 format. Uh, we also uh, run initial uh, analysis tests and offer them as initial benchmark results to compare performance between methodologies. Uh, so about our uh, video dataset, uh, it's uh, aimed to represent typical consumer videos uh, uh, done in various locations with people in the scene and uh, these videos were recorded in the wild in indoor and outdoor locations uh, mostly in the inside university facilities and uh, campus uh, around the campus area and uh, around the city of Oulu 
and we use two consumer price recording devices uh, of which I will tell soon a little more and in total we created uh, 80 video clips and uh, this formed 2000 uh, seconds of mat uh, video material or 33 minutes of material. So for recording we used uh, two devices, Nokia N95. Uh, we select because, uh, selected because during the time uh, it was a, a good representative, representative of these uh, mobile recording devices with its uh, VGA uh, video capturing and uh, up to 30 frames per second. And uh, as a counterpart we chose Sanyo Xacti uh, HD 1010, uh, which we selected because of its uh, full HD recording capabilities and because it was in the same price range as N95, so uh, the same range of, uh, range of customers uh, could buy both devices. Uh, we also uh, divided these uh, videos uh, into attentive and inattentive. So uh, inattentive videos uh, were done uh, by uh, asking for these people uh, in the view for the permission to uh, make this video and uh, naturally they then were focused on the camera or uh, some person behind the camera. So they uh, acknowledged the camera. And then in inattentive uh, the aim was to uh, capture a scene or an event and uh, the people in the view uh, they were indifferent towards the camera they might look at it but then they just look away and then we created the ground truth data uh, we created uh, mark two concepts person heads and people in the background uh, person heads uh, we used for marking recognizable people this meant uh, people who showed uh, frontal face for some time. So, uh, so we could say that uh, they could be identified from the video. And in total we marked 378 person head uh, object trajectories and this totaled in uh, uh, twi about 27,000 localized face regions in video frames. And uh, people in the background comes that we researched for people that were too far away or didn't show their uh, uh, facial identity so much that they could be recognized. So we wanted to di uh, divide these two uh, groups of people, at, uh, the people who can be recognized and the people who cannot. And then we run our benchmark with uh, person head uh, tracking. And this was based on frontal face detection uh, on which we run uh, visual object tracking. And the detections inside people in the background uh, regions were uh, ignored in this test because we were more interested how well we can uh, detect these uh, more interesting and ide identifiable people. And then we calculated uh, precision recall and f measure scores. Uh, from this measurement. And here they are. So here are quite a lot of numbers, but here basically you can see the uh, categories we had. So we had indoors and outdoors uh, separation, inattentive and attentive, and then uh, different recording devices, mobile VGA, uh, which is uh, Nokia N95, and Camcorder HD, which was uh, Sanyo. And uh, I could shortly point out just that we were Basically, our aim was uh, to get a good precision score. We wanted to uh, to minimize the false detections, uh, and I, w I think I can say we pretty much uh, reached the point. Of course, with a hit on the recall values, and then from the categories, uh, we could see that there was uh, uh, the most difficult category, which produced uh, the least. Uh, uh, the worst uh, F-meso score was this uh, outdoors inattentive case uh, with um, the uh, mobile VGA device. And uh, well, this is not that surprising. Uh, these are uh, quite uh, difficult cases. And then uh, in contrast, uh, 
The best performance was found from Indra's attentive uh, with uh, full HG material where we reached 0 0.8 uh, for F mesa. And uh, then we uh, indeed created this uh, annotation tool for mm, to create our ground truth data. And uh, it can be used to browse video content and load and save metadata and MXMN formats. And uh, uh, it allows the user to create concepts and mark uh, object sequences. And here is a picture of it, but I could demonstrate it shortly here. I have it open. I I have uh, opened the video. It took some time, so I have already done it. And now I can... Uh, this is uh, one video from our data set, uh, from a snow sculpturing event, or more specifically, it's a uh, human chess happening here. here. And I can load now... Uh, oh, we marked... Uh, head trajectory. So here you can see that there are these marked uh, person heads. And uh, uh, I think you can see the cursor. So here you can see all the into, uh, unique uh, names for this. So here is person head 3, person head 4 uh, on the list. And here is people in the background, which is not so well visible indeed somewhere in the back, so we cannot uh, identify this person so well. And uh, I think I could also quickly show how to create stuff. So here we can give a concept name. Let's mark trees and add a new concept. Now it came to this list of concepts. We can select it and uh, start tracking it. So here we have a box we can use to mark it in each frame and we can shape it to our liking. Let's mark this tree here and with space we can just move forward and reshape it if it happens to go behind something. And then we can stop the object tracking and, and now we can see this uh, tree in this uh, uh, edi editor. And naturally there was this uh, load and save capabilities. So we can go back to the slides. And that's all, f all from me. So I thank you for listening. And uh, here is, uh, if you are interested of the dataset or the annotation tool, here is the URL you can use to get there. Or if you are lazy, you can just type in Google Media Team Test Video Collection and it should be the first, first result. So thank you.